I'm Dr. Alan Blum, uh, director of the Center for the Study of Tobacco and Society, and it's uh, August 28th, 2020, and I have the honor of talking to Dan Delmonico, who's the founder and really creator of a museum that uh, we're going to talk more about. It's the uh, Military Ashtray Museum, but what we have is a, is a, a fascinating story about how Dan kindly uh, and gently wrote me a letter that uh, really has made a difference. I would say that the number one item in the hundreds of thousands of items that we have in our collection was always the JAMA ashtray because the Journal of the American Medical Association clearly should never have had a cigarette ashtray. But uh, recently, uh, Dan kindly wrote me a letter and I'll let him take it from there. Okay, basically the, the letter that I wrote, the email that I wrote um, identified the JAMA ashtray as a United States military ashtray uh, with the acronym Japan Air Material Area, um, which was the United States Army taking over Japanese airfields and air bases very shortly after the war, in, in uh, as early as September 1945. And the, the, the way that I knew that um, uh, this was not the Journal of American Medicine uh, but but uh, instead the U.S. military was that first of all the wings um, were were not medical officers' wings they were standard pilots' wings that were used for for about the 20s to the 60s and it just didn't make any sense to me why why uh, um, a medical association wouldn't have medical officers' wings and then I started comparing it to other examples that we had in our collection and I found uh, one spot-on identical um, ashtray that was uh, assigned to the 5th Air Force, the 5th U.S. Air Force, uh, in the same area at the same place at the same time. And um, a very similar ashtray that is what uh, the Japan Air Material Area turned into. Um, and so I sent that, uh, I forwarded that information to Dr. De Bloom and he immediately uh, responded and said, I, you're right, and, and we're going to adjust our website to show that accordingly. What a terrific, uh, I, I just, first of all, your scholarship, your enthusiasm, and your, your genuine curiosity, uh, you, when I, when I asked about, uh, let's face it, I mean, if, if I got a letter from somebody saying that uh, I'm the founder of the United States Military Ashtray Museum, I might have said, wait a minute, what is that? But it's really a remarkable collection that means a lot. Could you just explain, Dan, number one, uh, two things. How you, you came to uh, be not just a collector, but a scholar and a historian in this area. But secondly, how did you come across the website that we had and that JAMA ashtray? Um, well, I, I, I'm a blood relative of uh, General MacArthur through my mother's side, whose, whose last name, her maiden name was MacArthur. Um, actually, the, the, the general's um, chaplain married my mother and father in, in the 1950s. And so I always had a love of, uh, of our military and, you know, and, and our country in general. And I got into, because of my uh, family relations, I, I got into studying the, the flag officers, both Army and, and, and Navy, and um, uh, started collecting items that would come up at, at, at auction and approximately... 15 years ago, uh, probably 15 years into my collecting, um, I purchased an ashtray that was unidentified, but it had um, a, a United States Navy hat badge and four stars on it and uh, bought it very inexpensively because nobody knew what it was. And I did some extensive research on it. And in the National Archives found a photo of uh, Admiral King with the ashtray that, that was in high definition. You could actually um, identify um, matches of, of defects on the ashtray to the to the uh, um, to the photo, and that was ashtray number one. And then I realized that there was just nobody who had ever done any work in this area. And I'm not a smoker, and I've never smoked anything in my life. Um, uh, but it, they, I saw these things as very personal to the admirals and generals, so much so that they would you know, go to the trouble of having custom ashtrays made, even if they didn't smoke, because everybody that came to their office smoked. So it was a, almost a, a social thing. And from that ashtray, we built it up to approximately 3,000 ashtrays 
um, mainly World War II, but we have some that go back um, to the Spanish-American War, an, an ashtray that belonged to Admiral Dewey, and we've gone all the way up into um, Operation Desert Storm, and I think even a little bit past that, before they banned smoking in the military. Yeah. And uh, uh, we have been able, through acquiring them through veterans' families, um, I think we have one or two that actually came from a veteran that was in, you know, very elderly. But uh, mostly from the families and, and uh, research, we've been able to just kind of put together this puzzle. And with that information, we can identify almost any ashtray. And, and that actually was very influential in looking at the JAMA ashtray because when I saw it and, and, and saw it identified um, as the Journal of American Medicine, it, it struck my memory of one of our ashtrays and I said no, I've got one just like this and it was the United States Fifth Air Force and it's identical except for the verbiage on the ashtray and then I did more research and and you know we, we've already discussed that part where, where that went well from so my we standpoint found your mm -hmm. ashtray, Yo, go right ahead we found your ashtray because we actually own a JAMA ashtray and while I was researching it because when I purchased it I knew it was U.S. military uh, and I knew it was around World War II just from our other examples, but I didn't know what JAMA stood for. I could not find the acronym in any Navy book, in any uh, uh, in any acronym book associated with the United States military. Um, the reason being is it existed for so little, and then they um, then they changed the name to something else, so it was just kind of lost to history. And during that, I found your page that said it was the Journal of American Medicine, and um, I, I, I knew that could not be right. Um, and so I kept looking and um, just reading through literature, all of a sudden there it was in, in, in parentheses uh, spelled out and then right after it said JAMA. And then once I knew the name, I started researching just the Japanese air material area and saw what it turned into and found out what it turned into. I had an ashtray that was incredibly similar and it just dialed all in with the you know, with the materials and, and the, that it was made of. We, we have a metal, metallurgy gun in our, in our um, museum, and it's metal lined up with World War II era metal and the same metal that was used in the Fifth Air Force and the uh, FECOM ashtray that is what the, the Japanese um, Japan air material area turned into. And they just lined up perfectly, and, and uh, that's why I was confident to send that, that uh email to, to you, Dr. Dr. Blum. That was fantastic. The, you also mentioned that when you came across uh, that acronym, JAMA, it was not indexed. It was while you were reading in a book, you came across it, which is incredible uh, detective work. I could not find any, uh, doing the uh, um, internet searches, I could not find JAMA anywhere. And uh, it was I wouldn't call it luck, but just just going through a pile of literature, um, stumbled across this. And it, in, in all honesty, if I would have read Japan Air Material Area, I'm not sure I would have realized that was JAMA, but it actually uh, had it in parentheses afterwards, which I did not understand why I was doing my searches. That didn't come up, but it didn't come up, um, it, it, including in where I found it. And and uh, when I saw it, I was, I was very surprised. For very, my, very surprised. For, for, from my standpoint, I should have known because I actually worked at the Journal of the American Medical Association as a fellow in medical journalism. And the name JAMA only started appearing on the journal's uh, cover in 1960. It, it was the Journal of the American Medical Association and never JAMA until 1960. And I knew this ashtray predated 1960. I didn't think twice about the wings. But I think what's important from two standpoints, I collected ashtrays be, be, with medical themes because they were ironic. I mean, hospitals that have ashtrays. Uh, you'll be interested to know that we're replacing the JAMA ashtray on our website with uh, three hospital ashtrays, one from Johns Hopkins Hospital, one from uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana, and another one from MD Anderson Cancer Center. Uh, but I, the, <laughs> you, you get the irony that, that I came to. But what I'm so fascinated by is the devotion that you've had toward taking an artifact, an ashtray, that actually could be as important as well, ammunition or, or certain maps um, as a storytelling opportunity 
for World War II, World War I, anything. I mean, because these are obviously personal items that, that I'm sure you've heard many incredible stories uh, about an item. Would there be one, for instance, that has, a, has, has a, a story behind it that you yourself were moved by? Uh, absolutely. There was, a, there was an ashtray that I acquired from the grandson, uh, directly from the grandson of, of, Gen of um, uh, General William uh, Riley. And he was a United States Marine Corps general that served on every five, almost every five-star rank uh, uh, Pacific Theater Admiral and General, including MacArthur, Halsey, and Minutes. Um, he was on their war planning for how to um, uh, land troops, which is just something that just really wasn't done much before World War II. He became the expert on how do you land Marines, how do you land soldiers on a beach. And he was the a colonel at the time, became a, a one-star right after the war. So anyway, he served on the command staff of a, of a relatively obscure admiral named Hain Ellis, who was a two-star um, admiral in right pre-World War II, pre-Pearl uh, Pearl Harbor. And there was an ashtray that was made for the, the admiral. And um, he gave it as a gift to uh, uh, Colonel Riley at the time, who later became a one, two, and a three-star. He retired as a lieutenant general, I think, in 54, somewhere in the late 50s, uh, early to mid to late 50s. And uh, the grandson wrote uh, just an amazing letter that basically compared the ashtrays in importance to the admirals or generals' hats and uniforms, that these things were custom-made for them. Uh, in many cases, like in Admiral King's case, that he actually not only had one uh, um, ashtray from Admiral uh, Hain, Hain Ellis, but he had two from Admiral King, who he served on his staff. And he told the story of how Admiral King, when he took command of the Atlantic Fleet, actually, actually sketched his own ashtray huh. and sent it down to a to a repair ship to be to be built to, to his order and he had uh, five of them made and he kept them on the USS Texas and one of the ashtrays that he kept well he was awarded that, that, that when the admiral would go from let's say commander in chief United States Atlantic Fleet which was uh, Admiral King from uh, February 41 to December 31st 41 then he became uh, chief of naval operations he was promoted. Well, they gave all of those old um, identifying objects, uh, lower rank and or uh, um, different command title, they gave them to guys. They gave them to their staff. They gave them to dignitaries. And Admiral King gave um, uh, uh, Colonel, then Colonel Riley, uh, two of his ashtrays, one that was used at the, um, the um, uh, what was that conference, the Atlantic Charter Conference. Um, at, at the very beginning of the war, and uh, right, actually pre-war, uh, right at the end of 40, uh, before Pearl Harbor, um, I think it was August 41 with Churchill and, um, and, and Roosevelt on the USS Augusta. And uh, King was present, brought his ashtray, and Roosevelt and Churchill used his ashtray. And he saved that all the way to, uh, to being C&O, um, and then uh, awarded it to uh, Colonel Riley. And Colonel Riley, who later became Lieutenant General Riley in the Marine Corps, saved it until he died in 1970. And um, this guy put in perspective for me, the, the, the general's son, uh, grandson, put into perspective how important these were. Um, they, they were custom-made, they had rank, they had command title on it. Um, they were made of, of uh, valuable war materials, brass, manel, um, sometimes stainless steel. Um, they were stolen. They, they were so popular that sailors would steal them uh, uh, and take them home as souvenirs. They were, they were like uh, as, as much of a mark of the admiral as his insignia. And they had, actually, Admiral Kings and Admiral Ellis had their insignia permanently affixed. So, you know, they, they're just ex exceptionally historic items that meant so much to these guys. Every single admiral, every single general, whether they smoked or not, had them. And they're lost to history. They tell a great story. Yeah. They tell a great story. And it's a social history that, that's, that it's almost, you know, I can look at an artifact and I can tell you a story that'll just knock your socks off. And that's what it sounds like you can do as you take people 
on a, a, a virtual guided tour, you can tell these great stories. Um, can I ask about your plans for uh, the museum? Yes, our, our, our plan is I'm going to have a physical location, but the, but the point of the physical location is more for um, my enjoyment. It's going to be kind of like an office museum that will have the, the most outstanding pieces of not just ashtrays, but I have uh, uniforms and hats and, um, uh, you know, they frankly are, are more historically significant than the ashtrays, as passionate as I am about them. I have Eisenhower's D-Day hat. Um, I have the hat that... Uh, uh, Admiral Nimitz wore the surrender of the Japanese. Um, you know, some some truly, you know, um, uh, if high uh, a level American general officer, flag officer items as you can have. And so I'll display them in that fashion. And, um, you know, I anybody that wanted to see it for a, um, uh, a scholarly reason, I would be glad to show it. I'm not going to sell tickets. I'm not, it's not going to be a business. I, I have no desire to to profit off it or, or to turn it into a business. My desire is more um, to have an online museum that anybody can get to and do a virtual tour so that if they find an ashtray instead of scrapping it, they can look at this, this, this body of work and say, I've got something important here, and they can compare it. To, you know, Because uh, I'm going to share all the information that I found, and it's vast. I think um, It's going to be shared on this website. I think, too... Um I'll bet you you'll probably be doing a little bit what I'm doing now, recording some stories of 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 that are behind some of these artifacts from some of the donors and some of the people that you've acquired these from. The the story I just told you about Admiral um, King? I'm sorry General uh, Riley's grandson. Right. Uh, we documented it in a notarized letter, and that notarized letter will be. Um, uh, in a photograph next to the, the three ashtrays, the one I got from uh, um, from Ellis, uh, the one that belonged to Admiral Ellis and the two that belonged to Admiral King. Um, and it really brings them to life because, when, you know, and, I, and I've had this conversation with other uh, military historians and, and, and general officer collectors that if, if you put those three ashtrays on the table and you rip up that letter and nobody knows what they are, they're basically scrap metal. Well, except they, for the they, fact, they, except, somebody, except yeah. it, what, what you're going to be doing a podcast. Uh, if you don't, I'll do it for you because you, you get these stories down just like you're telling me what I've learned from you. I think some recording will be really invaluable. Agreed upon. Yeah, because this is, this is a, there is, I mean, I don't know anybody else um, uh, uh, that, that has, that has spent the time, it has spent any time on this. They're the greatest collectors I know in military will have one or two or three ashtrays, and most of them don't even know what it is, and they don't care because they they look at an ashtray, especially in light of 2020 with the, you know, the, 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 the understanding of how bad smoking is for you and what have you. You know, they're kind of a, of a pariah, but I just look at it as a historic artifact. I don't look at it as pro-smoking. You know, I'm not pro-smoking. I, I won't fit next to somebody who's smoking, but these items are, are um, you know, frameable. They're, they're, they're uh, displayable. They're, they're, they last forever. They're, you know, some of them are seven and eight pounds of uh, uh, gun brass where they would have a battle and then melt down the shells and make ashtrays from them. And, um, they're just they're just amazing artifacts and um, and, and uh, not that you asked but I'll share that I've actually got some emails because the, although the, the the online museum is not open it's uh, it's under construction but you can actually go on and look at it and I've had people write relatively angry emails saying I can't believe you're promoting smoking and I have to respond <laughs> and say I've never smoked I've never smoked in my life we're not promoting smoking this is American heritage that unfortunately you know. General Patton smoked, and, and I guess we could, you know, uh, bury that, but he had an ashtray, and I own it, and it's a military collectible, and I'm proud of it, and, you know, I want people to, to see it and know what it was, and, um, uh, you know, so, but, but that's, you know, that, that's some, sometimes you face those things. Well, you've, <laughs> you, you've educated me, and I want to thank you. Also, before we uh, um, end this particular call, I know we're going to continue the dialogue, but would you uh, provide, you said we could go on and, and take a look at the work in construction? What is the website? Sure, sure. Yeah, I can, I can give you the, the, uh, the website is uh, U.S. 
M-A-M, which is militaryashtraymuseum.com. And, uh, again, it, 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 it's a body of work. Don't, you know, it, it, sure. um, no, but it, it's a template. It's not yeah. a... Don't look at it as a as a as a final work. It is not. No, I I, I I I won't. But I mean, I think again, it, it, this this is an important social history angle, and it's it's uh, we come at it from different directions. You've educated me, and I appreciate it. The United States Military Astro Museum, USMAM dot com, and Dan Delmonico. Thank you. I I will look forward to continue our dialogue and uh, learning more from you.